Hello everyone, this is the Pencrest High School AP Physics 1 video series. This is video 2F, projectiles. Now we've already looked at uh, vertical free fall. Uh, we're now going to introduce free fall objects that, uh, in addition to vertical motion, have a horizontal component to their motion. Um, typically these objects are called projectiles because they are launched or projected with some uh, initial velocity. Now, the key issue to remember uh, about projectiles is that they're subject to gravity only. Again, they are in free fall. Uh, just as before, when we had an object that was thrown vertically, uh, the analysis of a free fall projectile starts just after it leaves the launcher and ends just before the projectile lands. Uh, typically, we ignore uh, wind resistance or air friction in problems of this type, at least for now. Now the, uh, the dominant skill that you'll need in projectile analysis is kinematics, but there are also elements of vector components. Um, we're going to separate the motion into uh, potentially an up column, a down column, and a horizontal column. Uh, projectiles move with uh, accelerated motion vertically because of gravity, we know gravity points down, uh, but horizontally they move with a constant velocity. So gravity does not affect the horizontal motion. Now the magnitude of the initial velocity of a projectile, again this is as it leaves the launcher, it's commonly called muzzle velocity. Uh, it can conceivably have an elevation or depression angle uh, again, we would call this angle theta. We're familiar with that already. Um, elevation angles are measured up from the horizontal. Depression angles are measured down from the horizontal. We've, we've seen that already. Now, when the muzzle velocity has some initial angle to the horizontal, uh, that means it's going to have an x and a y vector component. Um, again, we're familiar with initial velocity v0. Uh, we will see that used frequently for muzzle velocity. Um, if we have to separate the muzzle velocity into components, we would call them V0x and V0y. Uh, we do know how to get those already, given our vector component formulas. Now we have a couple of options here. <clears throat> the first is called a flat ground problem. Uh, when a projectile is launched over a uh, flat ground or a flat surface, uh, typically it will land at the same height from which it was launched. So it's launched from here with its initial velocity v0, follows a parabolic trajectory and lands again at the same elevation, the same height from which it was launched. We're going to have up, down, and horizontal columns for the kinematics. Now there's a lot in here. We're going to take a look at the columns one at a time. When we look at the up column, we're interested in the vertical motion from this point to here, to the highest point. And you'll note, once you realize that the, y, the vertical component, the y component of the muzzle velocity, goes into the v naught column, v naught spot in the up column, the rest of the up column looks exactly like vertical free fall when you throw something straight up in the air. Okay, We've assumed here that the, the origin is at ground level, so here's my x naught. And the, the maximum height reached by the projectile measured here is what goes in the final position column. So when the up column ends is at the highest point here. You'll notice that the acceleration is gravity, so we're familiar with that already, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And of course the final vertical velocity, as far as the up and down goes, when it reaches this point vertically, its final velocity is zero. Even though it's still moving horizontally, it's still moving left to right, but it's not moving up and down at this point. Okay? Again, we would typically have to use the kinematics to solve for the maximum height and the time that it takes to reach the highest point. Now if we look at the down column, 
again this resembles vertical freefall um, the initial the final velocity in the up column goes right into the initial velocity in the down column again down follows up so it's uh, elements of multiple motions also you'll note that the initial position in the down column is the same as the final position in the up column so maximum height it starts there and then it goes down so it ends at zero same place where it started in the up column the gravity is again 9.8 meters per second squared it's negative it does point down so we do have to include the negative sign here and of course we have a t down time it takes for the projectile to go from the highest point down to the ground you will find um, when you do the analysis here that the up and down on a, in a flat ground problem are effectively mirror images of each other we'll find that the t up and the t down are the same and we'll also find that the final velocity in the down column is equal in magnitude to the initial velocity in the up column but it is negative because the projectile is moving downward now if we look at the horizontal column again <clears throat> we are separating the horizontal motion from the vertical motion so the gravity does not have an effect here okay the horizontal column is completely independent of the other two with the possible exception of the times which we'll get to in a moment the initial and final velocity in the horizontal column each of these is the x or the the x component of the muzzle velocity that we found in the beginning again the horizontal velocity is constant so these are the same the acceleration is zero All right, we can put the origin here and we see that the final position is what we call the range okay the range is the the horizontal distance traveled by the projectile we would find also that the time in the horizontal column is equal to the up time plus the down time all right so now we're going to move on we're going to look at um, a horizontal launch off a cliff uh, picture in your head a uh, stunt car driving off a cliff in a movie the projectile has an initial velocity right at the edge of the cliff here v naught and it travels down to some point here now again what we find here is that uh, there is no up column there's no up motion so uh, the initial velocity is horizontal so there is no initial ve vertical velocity this column the down column the initial velocity is zero it behaves just like uh, a free fall problem in which something is dropped off a cliff right we have the initial position we've established the origin up here right so the initial position is zero the final position is negative h vertically so it goes down this far acceleration of course is gravity okay and we have some time that it takes to fall now in the horizontal column we have the initial velocity here it is horizontal the final velocity is the same as the initial velocity the initial position is zero we put it here the final position is the range so how far away from the base of the cliff it landed the acceleration is zero in the horizontal column and the times are the same there's only one object so the down and the horizontal motions will have the same time Now our last uh, situation here is a cliff launch with uh, some elevation angle. Um, it's got some similarities to a flat ground problem. Um, got a few key differences, so we'll take a look here. First of all, we've established the vertical origin at the base of the cliff here. All right. Now we have the y component of the initial velocity here in the up column. Final vertical velocity is zero the initial position is h because it starts here and then the final position is what we're calling h plus delta x up 
Now this, if you look at the picture, this is effectively the highest point here. The delta x up is the displacement in the up column. It's here. Measured from the top of the cliff to the highest point. This is your displacement in the up column. Gravity is, of course, acceleration is gravity, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and we have a t in the up column. Now, uh, if you look at, take a look at the rest of this, uh, again, the down column follows the up column, so the initial velocity is zero. We have a negative vy. This is a quantity that we don't know. So there's no easy way to solve for it other than the kinematics. We can see that the initial position in the down column is the high point here, h plus delta x up. The final position is zero. We've established this as the vertical origin. It's going to land there vertically. So its final vertical position is zero, gravity, and a t in the down column. You can see again the horizontal column. We've got the x component of the muzzle velocity. Initial position is zero here. Final position is the range. Again, horizontal displacement. Acceleration is zero. And once again, the time in the horizontal column is t up plus t down. Okay? You may be asked at some point uh, about the magnitude and direction of the velocity of the projectile as it lands. Um, at this point, the velocity of the projectile has an x component and a y component. You treat these two as components of the velocity, find the magnitude using Pythagorean theorem, and then you can use uh, trigonometry inverse tangent uh, to find the depression angle. When it lands, of course, the angle will be below the horizontal because it's going to the right and down. Okay? So, in summary, um, once you establish the vector nature of the muzzle velocity, uh, separate it into components if you need to, uh, projectile problems become uh, more or less straight kinematics problems. Um, projectiles are common sources for multiple choice questions, uh, especially on the AP physics exam, and um, certainly you'll see some examples of that um, in uh, WebAssign. Okay, so that will conclude our projectile analysis. And uh, as a matter of fact, that will conclude our two-dimensional kinematics in two dimensions. So uh, until next time, I'll see you again soon.